Hello and welcome to yet another command block tutorial. Today's video we will finally be doing part one of my scoreboard tutorial. So part one is going to basically include um, a lot of different things actually. Uh, mostly we're going to be focusing on the aspects of the scoreboard command except for the operations aspects because that's going to be the focus of part two. I am considering doing a part three to this video at some point, which would be general tricks and techniques that I use quite frequently. However, part one that we're doing today is just going to be the very basics of how to use scoreboard, what you can do with it. Part two is going to be the operations aspect, which is like the kind of math that you can do with scoreboards because it's a little more complicated and I wanted to make that a separate video. Part three is potential tips, tricks, extra things that you can add on to it. But to start off, I really do hope this isn't your first video watching of me. I really encourage you to at least watch the tag video that I have, because it's going to help you understand the scoreboards a lot better in this video. And it's going to make it just a lot easier to do this. So, but to start off, I want to kind of explain how to think about scoreboards, because it isn't actually as hard to use scoreboards as most people think. You just need to know how to think about them more than you need to know how to do them. And I understand that probably doesn't make sense at first. Hopefully this little demonstration is going to help give you guys some extra information. So when I talked about my tag video, one of the things that I talked about was how to basically you set a value to be true or false on a player. So imagine instead of just being true or false, you have a player, you have a value, and you have a number. So let's pretend this chest right here is a player. So I have stone. So we'll say stone is the identifier, and I have 64 of them, as you can see here. Now I also have dirt, and I have 32 dirt. Additionally, I have sand, and I have 16 sand. Now all of these are under the player chest, and we'll just pretend that's a player. However, there's only 64 stone. When it comes to the dirt, there's 32. And when it comes to the sand, there's 16. Now, all of these pieces of information belong to the chest. So, and like I said, we're going to pretend that the chest is a player. So we're going to see how that equates to scoreboards. So if I look down here, so we have the player first, which is the chest. Then we have the value, so the stone or the identifier. This is what's going to be the actual scoreboard that we're going to explain in a minute. This is just going to be a name that identifies this type of value. And then we have an actual numeric number after that. So all of these belong to the chest. All of these belong to the same player. They have a name such as sand here that identifies it and then an actual numeric value. So if you guys watched my tag video, which I please watch that before watching this one, it's going to make it easier to understand. This is the player, this chess part, that's the player. This is the tag. This is like the name of the tag. But instead of either being true or false, we have a number associated with it as well. Hopefully that kind of gives you guys a better idea of how these scoreboards work. And as you get further into the video, if you're still confused, hopefully you'll be able to kind of piece these, these things together. Okay, so scoreboard commands. You type in the word scoreboard, and then you have two options. You can either have objectives or players. And then you type that in, and you're going to get some other options. But to start off, we're going to go over all the options that are under objectives. So when you type in scoreboard objectives, you will have four different objects options. You can either add and remove, you can list, or you can set display. So Unlike tags, where you could just make up a tag as you go, you have to, for a scoreboard, you need to assign the existence of that scoreboard before you can do anything with it. So I need to, going back to this chess example, I need to say that, hey, sand is a thing. Before I can uh, put sand in a chest, before I can give it a number, I have to say, hey, there is a thing called sand. Or the same thing, you know, I have to sign that there is a thing called dirt before I can add numbers to it and before I can give anything to a player. So in order to do that, we do a command like this. So we do scoreboard, objectives, add, and then this part is really important. So I have it labeled as guppy. Anytime I'm doing commands that are talking about this scoreboard that I'm making here, I will always use guppy with no capital. Now I could use capital letters if I wanted to, but you need to be consistent. If you use capitals here, 
you have to use them everywhere. Additionally, you can only have one scoreboard that is called Guppy. You can have a different scoreboard that's called Guppy with capital G, it doesn't matter, but you can only have one that is defined exactly like this. And anytime you're writing commands, you're using it however you wrote it here. Then we have the word dummy. It's always going to be the word dummy because it, if you guys are new to commands, you can just ignore what, what I'm about to say here. It's not that important. But basically, there's more you can do with scoreboards in Java Edition than Bedrock. And they it added functionality so we could eventually do more and just never add anything other than dummy. But basically, what the word dummy means is that it's just a value that doesn't change by gameplay. It can only be changed through commands. And then the second section here, Guppy Duck, this is the display name. This, I can actually have, I can have more than one scoreboard that is exactly the same, capitals, uncapitals. This doesn't really matter. Uh, this only is how, this is going to be how it looks. And you'll see that when I hit the set to display example in a little bit, you'll see what I'm talking about here. But this is however you want it to display. And that will make a little bit more sense in a few seconds here. Okay, so I'm going to create this objective, and you can see right here, added new objective, guppy, duck, guppy successfully. And now I can remove it. So this is a very similar command. So scoreboard, objectives, remove, and then guppy. And like I said, this is lower, all the lowercase, just guppy, the name that I was really heavily emphasizing the first thing before the word dummy in the last command. You don't need to do anything after this, just remove it, and it's no longer in the game. However, since this is a scoreboard tutorial video, I will actually need some scoreboards to make the video. So I'm going to keep this one in. I'm going to re-add it. Okay. Then we can list the scores. So this is pretty simple. Scoreboard objectives list. This just lists all scores that are in the game. So you can see here. Guppy displays as Guppy Duck and is type dummy. It's pretty simple. That's all there's to it. Just this output right here. If I were to remove it, press this, uh, it says duck, which just pretend that doesn't exist. That's for later in the video. But you get the idea. So I re added it. Guppy is currently in there. And you guys are going to see a little bit more. So now we're getting to the set display command. So this is always going to look pretty similar. So we have scoreboard, objectives, set display. And then right now we have the word list. There's three options here. And then we choose the, the value or the score. So this would be like the stone or the dirt. It's the heavily emphasized name. This is what you're putting at the end. And this is going to make the set display of the list guppy. I will show you the list once I make it. So when I put my score here, up here on the right side over here, that is where we are going to see the scoreboard. Now you're not going to see it now because I don't have any values yet. Uh, I can skip a little bit ahead just so you guys can see. See, it's going to have zero right here. And now if I want to, and I'm just going to just ignore what I'm doing right here. Now, you can also see how it says Guppy Duck up at the top. That's the display name that I chose earlier. Now, if I hit this, which is going to, this is the same command, but you'll see after list, I put nothing. This is how you remove a display. You type in the same command, but at the very end, you just put nothing, and that will remove it. Boom, back to normal. See, it's here. Now it's gone. All right, so the other option that we have, or one of the other, we have two more options. So instead of list, we can put sidebar. And this is probably the one you guys are most familiar with. I've used it before in some of my other videos, I believe. And it's just the easiest way to see it, especially if you're making videos. No, oh, there we go. See on the right side of my screen about where my sword is? It says Guppy Duck. That is because it is on the sidebar. So we can remove it in pretty much the same way. I don't know why it's lagging so much when I do that for some reason. It's making me open. I, I don't know why it's doing that. Shouldn't be doing that. But just imagine it came up and appeared right away because I don't know why it's lagging right now. So the last one we have, I can't really demonstrate this one, um, but it should be low name. I cannot type. 
And basically what this is going to do is literally below my name, you can't see it because it only works when you're looking at other players, but it's going to display your personal score and only your score below your name. So this is good if you want to have a point system where players can see how many points another player has. That's where you'd want to use below name. Uh, fortunately, you can only do it multiplayer, so I can't really demonstrate it in this video. However, I, I don't know why these commands examples are wrong. You just, just pretend they're not. Uh, right, but basically that is all that there is for the objectives. So now we're going to be moving on to the second section, which is the players section. This gets a little more complicated, as you can plainly see. But what's important is we've already created the scoreboard object guppy, and that is something that's going to be crucially important to keep in mind. So now with players, so instead of typing objectives, we type in players after the word scoreboard. Now we have the options of list, we have the options of set, add, remove, random, and reset, and we have the option test. The reason set, add, remove, random, and reset are all together is because their functions are very similar, whereas list and test are a little more unique. So we're, we're going to just kind of skip over list because it's pretty simple. You're just listing the scoreboards that the player already has. Uh, there isn't actually a lot of use for this, so I'm just going to skip over it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is setting our score. So you can see here, scoreboard, players, and we have the word set. Then we have at A, so this can be any entity thing, any set of selectors. I have a whole video on selectors, so I'm not even going to bother discussing them now. Then we have the scoreboard value that we talked about, and then the actual value. So right now I have it set to zero. If I hit this, you can see on the right side of my screen, guppy duck is equal to zero. If I want to set this, let's say I want to set it to 10, 10. Now I'm going to set it back to zero, zero. You can see, no matter how many times I press it, it's always going to be zero. Now, another thing we can do, instead of using an entity, for whatever reason you don't want to use an entity, which I do all the time, you can actually use basically a variable. So what I mean by that is we have uh, you just type a word in here, and this will be basically a permanent variable. So if I press this, and you can see I have this variable color on the side of my screen. There's no entity attached to this. Color obviously is not going to die. He's not going to leave. It's not going to leave the game. This will be a value that I'm always keeping track of, and it's just it's not tied to any entity. It's just a variable in of itself. There's a lot of uses for this if you don't want to tie scoreboards to entities. I'm not going to get into the uses in this video, but just keep in mind that this is also a possibility. So similarly to set, we can also do add, which you can probably guess as to what that's going to do. So exactly the same commands, but instead of set, we have the word add here. And look, now I have one because I added one. But if I add another one, it's going to go up to two. Keep in mind I'm looking on the right side of my screen here. I added up to three. So it's going to plus one, and I can change this value. I can make it plus two if I wanted to. It's going to go up by two every time. You can change this value however you want. And that's all it's going to do. And you can do the same thing, obviously, up here with this variable that we established earlier. That's just whatever you want to call it. So in this case, I use color. And boom, it's going to go up plus one. Can you guess what remove does? It removes the value. So I have it set to remove two. And it removes two every time I click it. Now you can make this a whatever number you want. So I did for my variable, I have it removing 20. And you can see scoreboards can go into negatives. Then we have random, which once again, you can probably guess as, guess as to what this is going to be. And that is, so instead of set or add, we place random. Then we have whatever target, so add A, like we were doing for the previous ones. And then we have two numbers. And this is going to set, so it's not going to add or subtract. It doesn't care what your current score is, but it's going to set the value to a number between these two numbers, including those two numbers. So I could become 2 or 10. So if I press this a few times, so you get 8, 6, 5... 
it's going to give me a different random number between those two values anytime. And you can see I got 10 that time. So these two numbers that you see at the top and the bottom, these are also possible values. One important thing, always have the lower number first. And that includes with negatives, because you can do all the scoreboard stuff with negative values, but always have the lower number first. And even though 50 seems like it's bigger than 10, keep in mind, since these are negatives, the higher absolute value would be the lower technical value. So you can see it's going to give me random values for color between negative 10 and negative 50. And lastly, we have reset. Now this is just instead of a number, we have reset the word here, the target, the score, and then no number afterwards. And you can see it entirely removes me from the scoreboard. And I can do the same thing up here as well to the variables. Now, effectively, because I'm no, because I got reset, effectively I'm at zero. So if I were to add one, it would be adding one to zero. So I'd be at one right now. So I'll even reset again. If I were to remove two, like this command is going to, I should be at negative two. So effectively I am at zero. So you might be saying, what's the difference between setting something to zero and resetting it? And that is where testing for scores comes into play. So one thing you're going to see here is instead of uh, sets or add or anything, I'm using the word test here, everything else is the same. And then I have zero and one. So this is going to test if I have the score between zero and one. Now I just reset myself, which means I'm effectively at the score value of zero, but the test is off. The light is off. Even though I'm technically at zero because I'm reset, because I don't have an actual specified value. It just assumes that I have a null value, which means I can't test for it until I get an actual value. So if I were to actually go here and set it over to zero, you'll see the light turns on, even though the value's kind of the same, because it isn't specified, it cannot be tested for. And now because it is in range, it's going to turn on. And you can see I have it set zero to one. So if I were to give one to myself, it's still on. If I put myself to two, now it turns off because two is not in range. The same can be done for the variables as well. So in, for instance, if I put color up to two, you'll see that it turns on. And now you might say, well, okay, you set it just to two, so it could be, it's only going to turn on if it's at two. If you put no second number, it will be infinitely high. So I can click this up as much as I want. If I only have one number in the test command, it's going to test from the number I start to infinite infinite value basically if i only wanted to make it two and like i can't test for anything else let's put that there so really the way you're going to want to use the test scoreboard values is either have a comparator coming out of it or have a conditional chain command block like this that way these command blocks are only going to fire whenever this one's true but i'm not getting into chain command blocks in this video All right, that actually covers the actual scoreboard commands with the exception of operations, which is going to be a separate video in itself. However, there is more that you do need to know for the basics of scoreboards, because even though, yeah, we manipulated the numbers a bunch, we didn't actually do anything with the scoreboards. So I'm going to set myself to zero real quick. So I'm also going to just reset this so it's not distracting. Okay, so there's basically two things we can do and that's execute and select our arguments. So one thing we can do here in an execute command is we can check if the score of the closest player matches one, say hi. So you can see because it doesn't match one, nothing's going to happen. If I make it match one, boom, in the chat said hi at the right at the bottom. Fancy. If you want to know more about the execute if commands, I have a separate execute command. I will put the link in the video description 
But for the sake of brevity, and since I've already covered it in a separate video, I'm not going to go any more into execute if. What I am going to go into more is entity selectors. Yay! And I have a whole video on entity selectors that you should also check out. I'll also link that in the description. Uh, however, I didn't discuss scoreboards in that because I wanted to save that for this video. So we're going to be using a TP command for this example. However, you can use any commands that you that had that includes entities. So it could be damage, TP, execute, um, kill, some no, not summon, but there's a hundreds and my mind's blanking, but you guys can imagine what you can use this for. So we're gonna be using TP for the examples because it's kind of easy to demonstrate. And basically what we're gonna be saying is hey, for anything, any player, because we're using at A, any player that has a score of for guppy that is equal to one tp them above this block and because i have one i am now above this block so what you're looking at here is within these brackets you want to type in the word scores then an equal sign and then you have the curly braces keep in mind this is not parentheses this is not brackets you want to have the curly ones because they're fancier but you have to use those ones if you use the other ones it won't work please use the curly ones not these are parentheses don't use these then you have the score name that we talked about earlier and then you have the actual value that you want it to be now if i wanted to this is the exact same command except i have an exclamation point in front of the number this means not so this will teleport any player that has a score of guppy that is not equal to one because it's equal to one it's not going to teleport me if I were to add another one to it. No, that's not one. If I were to add another one to it, it is going to teleport me. One thing to keep in mind, if I reset my value, it won't work. If I don't have a value because I'm reset or I've never been given a value, this isn't going to work. Even though it's technically not one, it's not going to work because it doesn't have a value to detect. And then another thing we can do is instead of maybe you want it to be a certain range instead of just one specific number, the way you'd indicate a range is you'd have the lower number, two periods, these are not commas, this is a comma, two periods, and then the bigger number. So this is going to teleport anything that has the range of one to five. So because I have currently one, it's going to teleport me. I'll show you real quick. I'll set it to two. Boom, because two is still between one and five, it's gonna, it's gonna work. Additionally, we can do the same thing. You put an exclamation point in front of the first number, and this is going to do anything that's not within this range. So you can see, it's not gonna work. Then you can also do a negative range. However, same thing is with the test commands and the other commands in the random. You want to have the lower number be first or it's not gonna work. And with negatives, even though this might look like it's the higher number because four is bigger than one, keep in mind because they're negatives, it's reversed. Always have the lower value first. I'm not gonna demonstrate this one just for the sake of time. And for the final one, it is how you can check for two or more scores at the same time. So currently there is another scoreboard in the game, which is duck. You can see here, I can set my duck value to either zero or one. So currently, it wants to say, teleport anything that has a guppy value of 0 to 10 and a duck value of 1. And I'll have the radius equal to 3, and I'll explain that in a second. So because my duck value is 0, it's not going to work. Even though my guppy value is within range, my duck value is wrong, so it's not going to work. If I set my duck value to the right one, then boom, it'll work. So the important thing to look at with this command is if you wanted to check for multiple scoreboards in the same thing, within the same set of curly braces here that we have, you type in the first scoreboard, the values you want it to be, and then this is a comma. This is, this is a period, you want a comma here. So you want periods in between numbers, and then to separate scoreboards, you have a comma. It's very important. Then we have the second scoreboard and the value that we want it to be. 
Then at the end, we have a comma. Let's say I wanted to add something else like a radius or a name. doesn't matter. I have videos explaining this if you want to, if you want to see it. Then we have a comma here, and then whatever else you want to throw in, just throw it in at the end. Now, one thing that I've heard from a lot of people, scoreboards are really complicated. They're really scary. I've heard people say that they won't even watch a tutorial. They won't follow a tutorial if it mentions scoreboards at all. Scoreboards are not that complicated. And you might say, well, you're an expert. You know this, you know this stuff. I've worked with a lot of people as they've been learning and scoreboards are one of the most intimidating things. And I'm sure from this video, it looks really intimidating because there's a lot of information here. However, from personal experience with myself, with others that I've worked with, with others that I've worked for, when you start using scoreboards, they actually become really easy. I, I know it seems like a lot of information. It seems like really complicated. You have numbers and math and stuff going on. But please, please, please just start experimenting with these guys. There's no better way to learn than experimenting. And I, I really do promise you, when you guys start experimenting with this stuff, the scoreboards will make a lot more sense very quickly. And on one final note, if you guys are interested, we do have a Discord. The link will be in the description as well. It's really good if you guys are trying to learn commands or if you're experienced with commands, you want to help other people out or you just want to get involved in a big command block community. I think right now we have over 800 members on my command block Discord. So if you guys are interested in commands, it is a really, really good place for you to be. Just a great place to get involved with the community, with command blocks. I really do heavily encourage you guys to join it. And with that, I'll be signing out. Keep an eye out for the part two and potential part three of this video. Bye.